Hello everyone, my name's Mike and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about why you shouldn't buy the MacBook Air and you should go for the MacBook Pro. Let's jump into it. So what am I talking about? Like many of you, I was excited about the launch for the MacBook Air and I watched the keynote and the specs were fantastic. And as I was watching the keynote, I was just getting more and more excited until they reached the end of the MacBook Air keynote and they got to the pricing. £1,199 for the base spec. Why is that an issue you may be asking? because the MacBook Pro, which has a better screen, better internal graphics, and a better processor, not by its generation, but by its clock speed, is only 50 pounds more. The base spec MacBook Pro is only 1,249 pounds. I'm gonna be just showing you a few reasons why this is such a bad buy. And if you are gonna be spending 1,200 pounds of your own money, that you shouldn't buy a MacBook Air and that you should buy a MacBook Pro. So let's jump into my laptop. So I've got my laptop just over here. And if we just have a look, we've got the MacBook Air. So it's a beautiful laptop, don't get me wrong. It is gorgeous, it's thin, it's light. This laptop needed an upgrade. The processor was a little bit slow and the screen was just appalling in 2018. So I'm glad that they have updated it, but there are a few issues with it. So. I'll go into that in a moment, but the, the screen is beautiful. I mean, if you're gonna buy a MacBook Air, this is the screen that it should have come with. The Retina display makes a huge difference. And the Touch ID, it is fantastic to see. It'll be quicker than typing in a password. The main important thing is the platform. It is a lot smaller. And the Force Touch trackpad is also 20% larger. The trackpad that we're used to seeing on the other MacBooks, we're seeing it finally in the new MacBook Air. If we just keep on scrolling down, you know, we're seeing the new eighth generation Core i5 processor. We've got the latest in Wi-Fi technology, so wireless AC, which is brilliant to see. Um, no Bluetooth 5 in this laptop, but again, not a huge -ish issue for most people. And we're finally getting Thunderbolt 3, which is brilliant. However, when we have a look at the MacBook Pro, well, I mean, nothing gets better than a MacBook Pro. We all want a MacBook Pro, but sometimes we can't afford a MacBook Pro, which is why the MacBook Air sold so well. It only started at around 750 pounds to 800 pounds. That is so cheap for a Mac. It is brilliant. One thing that they didn't sort of mention in the keynote is that these MacBook Pros, they will also come with the latest eight generation i5 processors. So when we're looking at the technical specifications, it is showing the current spec, not the spec that will be coming on the new MacBook Pros. So if we just scroll down, as you can see, we've got the latest eighth generation Intel Core processors. We've also got the much better retina display and we've also got on certain models the touch bar but the models that i'll be talking about will not have the touch bar so if we have a look at the 13 inch model it is only 1.37 kilograms and 14.9 millimeters thick and if we keep scrolling down as you can see we've got lots of power in these you know the macbook pro is aimed at the more graphic intensive user so for me i use the macbook pro for final cut so for me that is really really important over here as you as we can see final cut pro we've got much better render times so now let's compare the two laptops the macbook pro and the MacBook Air on its base spec. And you tell me which is better value for money. So over here, we've got the MacBook Pro, and over here, we've got the MacBook Air. So let's start with the MacBook Pro, as it's the more expensive of the two. So the starting price is 1249 and we've got the retina display with the wide color gamut, as well as 500 nits of brightness. So very, very beautiful uh, display. Now we don't get uh, the retina display with true train technology but that's not too much of an issue and as we can see we've got a 2.3 gigahertz dual core i5 processor and the base storage is 128 gigabytes with 8 gigabytes of ram the really important thing to note is the graphics so over here on the macbook pro we've got the intel iris plus 
graphics 640. This is a huge step up from the MacBook Air and I'll show you that in a moment. If we keep scrolling down, we still got the headphone jack, we still got the two Thunderbolt ports and we've got the butterfly switches that we've come to, well, not love, but we just make do. And we've got all the latest technologies, again, Bluetooth uh, 4.2. We've also got 10 hours of wireless web search and 10 hours of iTunes playback. So very, very good battery life. You know, one thing to mention is, is that on these MacBook Pros, they have come a long, long way from the previous generations. Now, if we go and compare the MacBook Air, which is 50 pounds cheaper, you tell me, how much we're losing for that 50 pounds. So we've got the Retina display, again, very, very nice, but it doesn't talk about how many nits of brightness, it doesn't go into too much detail about its Retina display. That's because it's not as good of a display as the MacBook Pro. So that is one thing that we're losing out on. If we look at the processor, for example, the clock speed of the Core i5 processor is only at 1.6 gigahertz. It does turbo up to the same, at 3.6 gigahertz. And if we have a look at the storage, it is still the same 128 gigabytes with eight gigabytes of RAM. We've got an extra two hours of battery life in terms of web and an extra three hours of iTunes film playback. So the battery life is better on this. If you're using your laptop mainly for watching videos and, and YouTube and stuff like that, then yes, the MacBook Air will provide you that extra few hours of battery life. But if you're gonna be using your Mac for anything else, then the MacBook Air probably isn't the one to go for. And if we keep scrolling down, I'll show you why. So with the graphics card, as you can see, we've got Intel UHD Graphics 617. This is a much worse graphics processing unit within the Intel chip. And this is gonna make a huge difference when you're using certain programs like Final Cut or Premiere Pro, Lightroom, uh, Photoshop, all of that stuff, it's gonna make a huge difference to those applications. If we just have a look at the weight, it is 1.25 kilograms. Now that is very, very light, but it's only 120 grams lighter than the MacBook Pro. So in my head, I'm thinking, if I'm gonna be using my laptop for anything else but watching films and YouTube, then the MacBook Pro seems like the better value for money. And it really is, because you get a better screen, you get better performance, you still get great battery life. If you are really concerned about battery life, if you really need to save that extra weight in your bag, then okay, the MacBook Air does make sense. But the performance hit is huge. I don't think people quite understand the difference in performance between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. And if you're looking at buying the base spec of these models, you are much better off going for the MacBook Pro. Now, please, if I've said anything wrong or you disagree with me, please leave a comment down below because I might be missing the mark completely on this new MacBook Air and I might have completely got it wrong. So let me know. If you're looking at the same way as I am, the MacBook Pro seems like a better buy. And with the specification that I would normally spec it out with, 16 gigs of RAM as well as the 256 gigabytes of SSD storage, then the MacBook Pro is the better buy, especially now that the MacBook Pro is gonna be updated with, again, the latest generation of Intel processors. So this is, again, gonna make a huge difference to the new MacBook Pros. Now, I've ranted on quite a bit, and if you stayed for this long, I really appreciate it. If you really enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. But for now, I will see you in the next video. See you later, everyone.